John begins his gospel with this prologue, which is a hymn to the word through whom all things were created. This word became flesh and brought grace and truth to the world. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A lot of people that I've talked to or heard from in recent weeks are hoping that the ringing in of a new year marks more than just a chronological end to 2020. They are really hanging on to the hope that things can only get better or easier or more normal than they have felt for most of the last year. But Truthfully, we're heading into 2021 with very little resolution. A pandemic that first showed up a year ago is, at, at least here in the United States, more out of control than it's been in the previous 11 months. We're experiencing ongoing political chaos and even threats of violence over an election that took place two months ago and feels like it's been going on for years. Many of our neighbors, friends, or family members are uncertain about whether they can go back to work or school. So the New Year festivities notwithstanding, the first part of 2021 is probably going to look a lot like 2020. And maybe that makes it extra important to hang on to Christmas for just a while longer than our attention spans and our busy lives usually allow. I know some households have already taken down the lights, put away the creche and the tree and the decorations. The New Year's ball has dropped and we are moving on. I'm already getting advertising for Valentine's Day gift <laughs> suggestions for Pete's sake. But especially after the year that we've had, what if we just kept our focus a little while longer on the miracle that is the birth of Jesus? 
and what a completely universe-altering event that is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. This gospel text is John's Christmas story. Barbara Brown Taylor Riley commented in one of her sermons that it's clear why there are no Christmas pageants organized around this story. It doesn't easily lend itself to costumes or stage props. It's hard to recreate the cosmos here in the chancel. <laughs> but for John, the Christmas event is part of this epic, ongoing story of creation. And he signals this with those first words that echo the words of the, the opening words of the book of Genesis. So Christ is not just the reason for the season. Christ is the reason for all existence, the source of the universe. He was present at the beginning of creation and will be present at the end of time, gathering up all things, things in heaven and things on earth. That is a lot to get a human head around. But right in the middle of this story of the universe, cracking time in half, as the writer Brian Doyle would say, enters Jesus, God's word made flesh, come to live among humans, teaching, healing, feeding, consoling, advocating, grieving, suffering, dying. And in that human experience, inviting and empowering us to live into what Paul describes as our destiny, our inheritance, as children of God. What an astonishing gift. In Christ, God sends two invitations. The invitation to experience the love and care and compassion of God with us and the invitation to share that love and care and compassion with others. Grace upon grace. My candidacy mentor called me earlier this week. We check in pretty regularly and he called me and said eventually, I understand you're preaching this Sunday. And I answered nervously, yes I am and I still don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> he responded, and the word became flesh and lived among us. You can't top that. Seriously, we can't top that. God loves the world so much that God came down from heaven, not hidden in a burning bush, not disguised in a howling wind, but fully revealed in the living flesh of a fellow creature, a human being. And in that human form, God experienced our joys and our sorrows and our sufferings and showed us how to love one another and showed us how to move toward and into the kingdom, empowered us to be lights in the darkness, demonstrating with our very lives the difference that Christ has made. This is why it feels like it's worth lingering on Christmas, while the world rushes on. As one pastor put it, Christmas isn't just a season, it's a way of life. It's a lifestyle of enfleshing and embodying the light and love of Christ, of being Christ to each other and seeing Christ in each other. That one is so hard to do sometimes. I've got to tell you that for me, at least, there were a lot of days in 2020 when I had a very hard time seeing the light of Christ in others. And I know that in those times, I wasn't radiating very much light and love either. We are dragging a lot of 2020 into the new year. So much is unresolved. 
so many are still hurting. Nerves are frayed. Hearts are broken. Sometimes it's our own selves or families who are suffering. And in those moments, the gift of the incarnation is knowing that God understands because God has suffered with us. Other times it's, it's our neighbors, our communities who are suffering. And for these, we are the word made flesh. Over the Christmas season, you have probably heard or read Howard Thurman's poem, The Work of Christmas. But as we look on 2021, it feels like it could be a resolution. Thurman writes, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. It might be easier for me to lose 20 pounds, which I say every year. We'll see. But the work of Christmas is the resolution that I pray I can carry into 2021. Christ, be our light. Make us your living voice. Let us be servants to one another, as we just sang. Help us to see your light in one another. Amen.